It's easy to believe that you're Superman because you can jump through windows, crash through walls, fall through buildings, turn cars over, virtually come out unscathed. So it's easy to start believing all that stuff in yourself, and it's a trap that we fall into. Hi, my name's Conrad Palmisano. I'm a veteran motion picture stuntman, and I always say I never got tough by winning fights, I got tough by losing fights. All you can do is tell yourself mentally to stay calm, don't panic. Another day of illusion and make-believe for Conrad Palmisano. Stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. When you set one of your friends on fire and they're running around the room screaming and waving their arms and like that, you can only guess that it's still going okay. I grew up in the northeast corner of the San Fernando Valley, out there in Somar. We lived rather poorly. Uh, if we didn't raise it on the property, we didn't need it. We had rabbits for meat and socially, economically um, hampered. So much so that um, when my dad saw the neighbors watering their lawns and the runoff, he built a dam and a curb so he could open it up and water our tomato plants with their runoff water. I was little and skinny and I was picked on and bullied a lot. I got hit in the mouth and I went into the boys' bathroom to wash the blood off my face and a teacher grabbed me and said, you're in a fight, you gotta get thrown out of school. I said, some guy hit me. And he said, who hit you? And right then the guy walked into the bathroom and I said, that guy did. Well, so now all of a sudden I was a tattletale. So then he waited for me every day before school and then every day after school to um, beat me up, push me around and just uh, be a mean bully. He was older than me, a couple grades ahead of me. and. I used to have to take a clean shirt and put it in my backpack on the way to school in the morning because after I got beat up in a thing, my shirt would be dirty. In those days, if you got into any kind of altercation in school, you got kicked out whether it was your fault or not. I was thrown out of school in the 10th grade. Got a, work, a job working for Sears and Roebuck for the installation company. I started out as an apprentice plumber. Now, mind you, I was lying about my age because I was only 16, and uh, the money that I made went in to help feed the family. I had uh, just turned 17. In those days, you couldn't join at 17 without your parents' permission. So I went and talked to them uh, about going into the military. And um, so they signed up and uh, let me join the Marine Corps. At that time, when I joined the Marine Corps, they teach you leadership skills and that you can achieve and you can reach the top of the mountain and you can climb over that fence. Whatever it is you have to do, they just tell you to do it and there's no excuses. They promised me a heavy pack and a hard time, and they delivered. Why must young Americans toil and suffer and sometimes die in such a remote and distant place? Yes, I remember leaving for Vietnam. The first time I went over was by ship. They dropped me in Okinawa because I was only 17. They couldn't put you in a combat zone until you are 18. So I turned 18 in Okinawa, then they shipped me into Da Nang. frightening the uh to think about um somebody trying to kill you um was really scary we get uh, shelled at night and uh, we're taking fuel and ammunition back and forth and like that so they would lay on the side of the roads and uh, try and shoot us in the trucks or blow the gasoline up or blow the ammo up or whatever and so we'd have a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on their truck and uh, so one of us be driving, the other guy's firing a 50 caliber, and we just try and keep on going. Once I was back and, and out of the service, I went back to Sears and Roebuck, specific installers, to see if I could get my job back. I started laying carpet, and there was really a lovely young girl that worked at Pacific Installers. Her name was Joanna Burdett. She's the one who started going like, what's the man with you? Get rid of that military haircut. Grow your hair long. You got so much more potential. You can do anything and be anything. You're a smart guy. What are you doing working at Sears still? You can be a leader. And in those days, one of the great things about the movie business, you, you had to come in working as an extra. And then, you know, if the bomb was over there, the stunt guy would hit next to the bomb, you'd be over here and you'd throw yourself in the air as high and as far as you could and crash on the ground and tumble and try and get the stunt coordinator to notice you a little bit. I went to a war for $180 a month. Now I'm getting three times that amount of money in a day working in the movie business, right? 
So I figured I'd die and go on to heaven. Here we go. You know, the other people would look at you mouth agape. That is no way I would like to do that for a living. Rated on. Get the Scouts, get the Marines. It was a challenge, you know, to do those things and then to build your expertise in those areas. Well, one of the scariest things I ever did was I had to get buried alive in a cave-in sequence. And I told him, I said, you know, whatever you're going to do, bury me deep, bury me once, because I'm not doing it a second time, right? And uh, you could tell instantly when they cut because you could hear the whole crew jumping down onto the dirt and they're just dog digging you out because they couldn't use shovels. They're both here. Get him out. But everybody in the crew was there to get a hold and you finally felt a hand on your shirt and they pulled you up out of the mess and you go, that was frightening because no matter how physically capable you were, you had no idea what it was going to be like. Had I not been bullied when I was young, junior high school and all like that, uh, my life probably would have taken a completely different direction because I wouldn't have left school. All those little coincidental things that happened was just a question of timing. And it, the Marine Corps always taught me, be prepared. And when you're prepared, opportunity knocks, and it just shows you how the littlest, smallest thing can change the entire course of your life. I've been playing cops and robbers and cowboys and Indians for like 50 years now, right? I got money in the bank, I, you know, I don't have to worry about things. I got my pensions and all that set aside. And um, I don't live extravagantly, but heck, if I want to go to Paris, I can jump on a plane and go. If you quit, there's no defense against yourself, but it takes a hell of a lot for other people to beat me down. No, that's not going to happen very easily because I'm not going to quit. They'll get tired before I get tired. And I think that's what the Marine Corps taught me, and you know, I've applied that to my life and hopefully taught it to my children. When you have a, a millstone hanging around your neck that's bringing you down, take it off your neck, put it on the ground, step on top of it, make it a stepping stone to the future. Don't let these things pull you down. And if you do, you got a real chance of succeeding.